feet together. And I'm going to look at you from the side, so just look straight ahead. Uh, normal, the shape of your spine looks normal, what we call lordosis, kyphosis, lordosis. It all lines up well, okay? Now what I want you to do is take a step over this way. One, two, good, okay? And uh, I want you to do some things for me. First of all, just stand still. I'm going to look at your shoulders, make sure they look nice and even, and they do. And I'll take a look at your your hips in terms of whether they line up normally. Now what I want you to do is this is the active back together. examination with the Bend patient doing the maneuvers. And when the patient goes into flexion, causing potentially protrusion of a disc posteriorly, if that's the maneuver that causes worsening of symptoms, especially if sciatica is reproduced by that symptom, that suggests that the problem is not in the posterior elements, but it's at the disc vertebral junction here in which case the disc protrudes posteriorly and impinges on the sciatic nerve and you get reproduction of sciatica which may be into the buttock only or you may have reproduction of symptoms all the way down the lower extremity. If we have them go into extension here and that reproduces the pain you're suspicious of at least three conditions. Um, spondylolysis which is a stress fracture of the pars interarticularis at any level but typically L4 or L5. Spondylolisthesis which is an actual progression of the spondylolysis in which the vertebral body moves anteriorly, or facet syndrome. It doesn't involve a stress fracture of the pars, but it involves facet. You have this facet joint dysfunction here where you have cartilaginous or ligamentous insufficiency, and you get chronic inflammation, some osteophyte formation, and you will get reproduction of the symptoms when they lean posteriorly. Those three conditions need to be differentiated by x-ray. Does that make it hurt a little bit worse? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. In assessing uh, sciatic nerve impingement or um, um, lumbar root impingement or upper sacral root impingement is to try to stretch the um, uh, sciatic nerve. And the way I do that is that I will pick the leg up, internally rotate the hip a little bit, and then I'll bring the straight leg up across the midline. It's not so much that you get pain in the back with this, it's that you get pain that reproduces the sciatic pain that radiates into the hip and into the leg and knee and into the foot. Generally, patients who have a disc protrusion that's impinging on the sciatic nerve will have a straight leg raise that's positive, manifest, as you'll reproduce the pain at less than 60 degrees. If you can get up to 60 degrees or greater and you don't have sciatic pain, you probably don't have a uh, disc herniation. Okay, do you have any pain that comes down your leg? Okay, all right. I'm going to do a couple other tests now. When you do the Patrick's test, what you're testing for is inflammation or some dysfunction of the sacroiliac joint shown here on the ipsilateral side. That is when you are pressing down on the distal femur. If the patient's pain is reproduced and it is in this area, when you then palpate them in the prone position, you have evidence of sacroiliac joint dysfunction. The patient at least needs an x-ray of the sacroiliac joint and you'll do it on the involved side, and then you'll do it on the uninvolved side for comparison. Test your flexibility a little bit. Now make it nice and loose. Again, don't work with me or against me. Just let me go ahead and do a couple things here. Okay, now relax. Good, all right. Do it on this side. Did that bother you at all when I did that? Not really, okay. Okay, your flexibility actually is, it looks like it might be a little bit better on this side, okay? I'm going to check your reflexes. Just relax as best you can. Good. Good. Let me bend your knee just a little bit. Good. All right. Yeah, I'll straighten it. Now press down against me just real gently. Good. Let me do the same thing on this side. Good. Perfect. Okay. Now what I want you to do is uh, pull your toes up that way. Okay. Now keep them there. When I pull, you resist. Ready? Go. All right. Good. All right. Now the whole ankle. Good. Okay. Now press down like you're pressing on the gas on this side. Press down. Okay. Press down on this side. Okay, now press to the inside right here against me. Okay, the inside on this side. Okay, press outside. Outside. Good. Okay, now, uh, just tell me if you feel me touching you. Yes. 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 
Good. Okay. All right. Uh, why don't you go ahead and turn over on your stomach? I'm gonna do a couple of things with your hip, your hips first. In and then assessing the lower back for the first time, I always assess right. the hips. And the way I like to assess the hips is passively and actively, just as we've talked about for other joints. The way I'll do that is have the patient lay prone, and I will actively internally rotate the hip and externally rotate the hip. The key to keep in mind from a physical exam point is any asymmetry. Do they lose internal rotation compared to the other side, or do they lose external rotation compared to the other side? If they do, that really suggests there's something wrong in the hip joint itself. And remember that if you combine the angle of internal rotation and the angle of external rotation, that generally is 90 degrees when you add those two up. It's generally 90 degrees. If it's less than that, considerably less than that, or if it's asymmetric, you need to get x-rays to make sure they don't have any internal derangement of the hip that needs further evaluation. I will then do resistance against internal and external rotation of the hip. And there's one condition specifically called piriformis syndrome, where when you do resisted hip rotation, you will reproduce the pain in the buttock or in the, in, generally in the buttock, but you sometimes get sciatic pain with piriformis uh, strain. And if you can reproduce the pain with those simple examination techniques, you can start them on a piriformis rehabilitation program and the patient will be better in a matter of days to weeks. So it's, a, it's an important diagnosis to make when you have chronic lower back pain and when you have sciatica that needs to be rolled out. Using the model here, as you palpate midline one level or another, what you're palpating are the posterior processes. I like to identify midline pain first, and then once I've either identified it or cleared it, then I'll move to the side and I'll palpate for paraspinous muscle pain and spasm on one side and the other, because I try to, to the extent that I can on physical examination, distinguish is it primarily bony pain, midline uh, pain that's on uh, the lateral side of midline, which makes me feel uh, a little bit more comfortable than dealing with simple muscle strain. It uh, doesn't rule out, though, primary bony or discovertebral joint uh, junction uh, dysfunction. Put your arms out straight in front of you, kind of like Superman position. Lift your right arm off the table. Okay. Does that bother you? Right in this area here. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Now, put that one down. Put your left one up. Same kind of thing, some discomfort down in here? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, now put your arms down, raise your right leg up off the table. Straight leg, straight, go ahead, keep your knee straight, straight up, okay. That bother you in here? Yeah. A little bit, okay, same area? Yeah. Okay, why don't you go ahead and turn around, Des Moines? My experience has been that my exam skills continue to improve over the last 12 years. The purpose of this video, or using a video, was that you would have a reference in your library, so that if you were wondering if you did something um, a certain way or the proper way, you might have something to refer back to. And having something like this allows you to improve your diagnostic skills over time and ultimately provide better service for your patients by making a specific diagnosis of musculoskeletal injuries.